Hey everyone, Aisha here. So today's Bible study is really meant to be a companion video to the video about dealing with judgment as a single mom. And so the reason why I wanted to go over this passage in Romans 12 verses 9 through 21, and honestly, it's a tough passage. It's a tough passage, but I think that it really gives us a lot of guidance in terms of how we should respond when we deal with judgment from a, you know, from a biblical perspective. What do we do? Because I don't know about you, like when I dealt with judgment, when people tried to judge me, you know, it either caused me to break down and cry or impact how I saw myself, um, it really destroyed my self-worth and my confidence, or I got angry and I began to harbor resentment and anger and bitterness towards the people who did judge me. And um, it made it hard to be able to operate from a place of forgiveness. I held on to a lot of unforgiveness, um, you know, and I just, I just, it just operated from a place that I didn't like the person. And it was hard because some of the judgment that I dealt with was in the church. And so when I would go to church, that like I no longer go to this church, but I remember going there. And whenever I would see this one person who, you know, was really unkind in terms of judgment, my blood would just like feel like it would be boiling and I would just be feeling overcome with anger and bitterness and I didn't want to speak to the person and it would just change my whole demeanor from that day because I was dealing with unforgiveness because I was angry and because I did not know did not know how to respond with the to the judgment right and in the in the video dealing with judgment I highly encourage you to to listen to that because I do talk about how do you deal with it how do you not internalize it but I also want to go through and do a companion bible study to be able to go deeper into that and then this doesn't just have to deal with judgment right it can deal with anything it can deal with betrayal it could be dealing with you know if the father of your child is just or children is just unkind like or if you're dealing with some drama or some nonsense on the job like whatever it is that might be not good that you're dealing with your in your life Romans 9, um, Romans 12, 9 through 21 can really help you. It can really give you a, a, a solid foundation from how to be able to address that from a biblical perspective. But I'm going to give you a caution. It is tough, right? It's tough. And so you'll be able to see as I start to read what, what I mean by why it's, in why it's tough. Actually, I want to start, um, I'm going to read verse 12. It says, rejoice in a hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. So number one, rejoice in hope. Know that we have our hope in Christ Jesus, right? So we can rejoice knowing that things will turn around eventually and that all things work together for the good of those who call, who love him and are called according to, your, to his purpose, according to Romans 8, 28. It says, be patient in tribulation. So as you're going through hard times, if you're going through judgment, if you're going through a tough season, be patient because um, things will turn around and be constant in prayer. Continue to seek the Lord in everything. So let's jump down to verse 14. And it says, um, um, actually, I'm going to, yeah. Um, actually, let me go to verse 9. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. So now let's get down to verse 14. And then it says, this is how you, this is how you respond to people who don't. Uh, who don't treat you well, right? Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lonely. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourself. But leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, 
feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And I think that this is a really good reminder. And this really challenged me as I read it. It said, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Because I don't know about you. When I read that Elijah was able to call down fire from heaven, I was like, Lord, can you please give me that skill? Can you please give it to me? Because I have some fire that I want to call down from heaven. And so, um, and then even when Jesus talks about, you know, how many times should you forgive someone? Seven times, 70 times seven. I was like, okay, so after 490, I can like pray and ask God to get them. But like, that's not true. You're not supposed to do that. Because Romans 12, 14 says, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them, right? So you don't respond to somebody by cussing somebody out. Out. You don't respond to them by spreading gossip and rumors. You don't respond to them by, by you know, treating them badly, uh, operating in a place of bitterness. But matter of fact, if you go all the way down to 20, it says to the contrary. So you're not to do these things, which are totally natural for people to want to do, right? Because it's hard to deal with somebody who is coming against you. It is hard. And so the natural thing would be, is to, you know, you know, yell at them, try and defend yourself, um, you know, maybe say mean things back to them. But Paul says, repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight for all. So even how you respond to opposition, how you respond to people who might be backstabbers, um, slanderers, um, ju judging and how they might m mistreat you, you are still to be able to operate in a way that is honorable and pleasing to the Lord because we please God and not man. And the beautiful thing about this is that there is a promise associated with this. When we operate the way God is calling us to operate, he's saying that vengeance is his. He's going to be the one who defends us. We don't have to do it. God is going to be the one who defends us. We are called to live in harmony with one another, meaning live peacefully with one another. And if someone is not operating in a way that's peace, peaceful, right? You can, number one, you can put up um, boundaries, right? But you also have to guard how you respond. I'm not saying take abuse, but you have to guard your response to this stuff. To make sure that you honor God in everything that you do. Bless those who persecute you. Do not curse them. Live in harmony with them. Don't repay evil for evil. Um, give thought to what is honorable. Focus on what is honorable. And it says to the contrary, you're supposed to serve your enemy. And like this, this is hard. This is hard stuff. You can only do this through the work of the Holy Spirit in you. That's it. Because none of this is natural. If your enemy is hungry, most of us would be like, oh, haha. We would want to laugh and be like, stay hungry. Deal with it. You shouldn't have treated me mean, right? But God is saying, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. And it's interesting that he says this. For by doing so, you will reap burning coals upon his head. Like, the person won't know how to respond. He won't know how to respond. But what you're doing is you're showing the love of Christ. You're showing the love of Christ. And it says you do not overcome by evil. You overcome evil with good. And so who knows how the good things will change that person's heart. Who knows how the good things that you do will bring them to Christ. Who knows how the good things that you do will um, help them to give their life to Christ. Who knows how they would change your life. Who knows? But it's important to know that in all we do, we need to make sure that we're honoring the Lord. And that means how we respond when someone judges. How do you respond when someone is unkind? How do you respond when someone treats you wrong? How do you respond? You bless them. You do not curse them. If you have to live with 
If you have to be in community or fellowship with them, then do it peacefully. Do not repay evil for evil, but do good. And you might need to ask the Lord to help you with that because none of that's natural. But the reason why I think that we're able to do this, because a lot of this reminded me of um, Matthew 5 when he says, when Jesus is doing the Sermon on the Mount. And he says, I'm going to read this to you. It's Matthew 5, um, I think at verse 30. In Matthew 5, verse 43, is Jesus says, And you have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of the Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good. He sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even tax collectors do the same. And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than the others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same. Therefore, you must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And so what the Lord is saying, like, it's like even unbelievers, even the wicked, show kindness and love to those who treat them well. But the way you begin to distinguish yourself as followers of Christ is how you treat people who don't necessarily treat you well. How do you treat people who are unkind to you? How do you treat people who are unloving to you? And um, it's it's a it's a tough ask. It truly is a tough ask. But the the thing is, is um, with God, all things are possible, and you need the work of the Holy Spirit. You need the strength and the power of Christ to be able to help you do this. So, if someone is unkind to unkind to you, you don't repay evil for evil, but you do what is good, because ultimately we have to be accountable to the Lord. And we can't say because someone else did this, we responded in this way, in a way that was not uh, godly, right? We are accountable to the Lord for our actions. And we have to remember that how we respond matters. And uh, to make sure that in all things, we're uh, representing Christ well. <laughs> so like I said, this was, um, this was a tough one. This is a tough one. It's a tough uh it's a tough message to teach because i know that it's a tough thing to do it's like i said it's not natural um but this is why um we have the lord this is why we have the lord and yeah it was hard i'm telling you it was hard going to church um and just being reminded every day of what that person did and trying to stop my kids from being dedicated it's hard right but eventually I did have to realize that I can hold on to bitterness or I can be free. And I wanted to be free. I did not want to be bitter. And so it took a while, but constant calling out to Lord, to the Lord, asking him to help me forgive. Help me to forgive. Help me to be able to not hold on to this. Help me to be able to operate in freedom. And operating in freedom meant that I had to let go of the anger. I had to let go of the bitterness. I had to let go of the pain. And it did not happen overnight. Everybody associated with that decision. Everybody who treated me and my kids unkind. Because um, for whatever, you know, because I'm a single mom. And um, whatever it was that they had going on there that led to us being treated the way that we were treated there. It was not right. And we should not have had to go through that. But what I ended up doing is I did not repay evil for, I did not repay um, uh, evil with evil. I continued to show up um, until I ended up leaving that church. But as hard as it was, I and as much as I wanted to ignore that person um, and those people, I would say hi if, you know, we were in, walking past each other or something i would say hi i uh, might have been sometimes like hi but you know i just i said hi um and i just prayed and asked the lord to soften my heart I soften my heart and what ended up happening is i ended up starting a uh, single mom's uh, life group at that church and was leading bible study for single moms at that church and so how i responded allowed things to be a witness to that church which made things better 
for other single moms who needed support, who were there, right? Who might have been feeling judged, who might have felt like they didn't belong. Through me focusing on doing good in that space, it made other people's lives better. I don't know if it ever changed their pers the other people's perspectives or biases or anything like that, but that's not my concern. But what I do know is that we were able to create a safe place for other single moms in that community to be able to have the support that they need. And so you never know how God is going to use this. You never know how God is going to turn it around. And that's why it's important to be able to focus on how you respond to negativity and how you respond um, to things that, that aren't good. Uh, how you respond in terms of trials and tribulation, right? And so, again, make sure that um, if you don't have this book, Navigating the Impossible Survival Guide for Single Moms and Pregnancy Through the First Year of Motherhood, I highly recommend that you get it. It is on Amazon right now. Uh, I talk about navigating through judgment. I talk about finances. I talk about building your support system. So much stuff I had to talk about. So I encourage you to grab a copy of that book. It's on Amazon and give it for a friend too. And then make sure you like this video, love it, share it, subscribe, leave a comment, and let me know how this helps you. Have a good one. Bye.